Welcome to Lecture 2 on the Federal Judiciary. Now, we left off talking about jurisdiction. Now, if a case belongs in federal court, the next question is which federal court has jurisdiction? Congress assigns jurisdictions based on geography. The nation is currently divided into 94 judicial districts. These judicial districts are then organized into 11 regional circuits and the D.C. Circuit. Each circuit court exercises appellate jurisdiction over district courts within its region. Article 3 of the Constitution is the shortest of the three articles establishing the institutions of government. Yet, as brief as it is, it instructs the judiciary to resolve several kinds of cases, including, for example, those to which the United States is a party in enforcing the laws and disputes between citizens of two or more states. Article 3 is not the only part of the Constitution that deals with the federal judiciary, however. In Article 1, the framers gave Congress the power to establish all tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court, which means that Congress could establish the lower court systems that we will discuss next. The first Congress used this power to create the hierarchy of the federal court system. Under the Judiciary Act of 1789, which incidentally was the first law that Congress ever passed, the federal judiciary is divided into a three-tiered system that still exists to this day. The lower tier consists of the district courts, the middle tier are the circuit courts of appeals, and the highest tier uh, it basically is only one court, the Supreme Court. Now let's discuss each tier as we go. Although the Supreme Court and its justices receive most of the public attention and news media coverage, district courts are the workhorses of the federal judiciary. They're also known as the federal trial courts. These courts operate in each state, the District of Columbia, and the United States territories. There are 678 judgeships within the 94 district courts across the country that has at least one in every state. District courts are the trial courts where nearly all federal cases begin. They make decisions on the death penalty, drug crimes, and a whole range of civil law violations. District court judges normally hold trials and decide cases individually. Only one judge is assigned to each case, with the exception for cases where a statute calls for a three-judge panel. District court decisions can be appealed. Level 2. two, The Circuit Courts of Appeals. District court decisions can be appealed or taken to a higher court for further review should the losing party allege that an error occurred during the trial. Roughly 20% of all lower court cases are reviewed by the federal appeal court system. For example, the losing party might contend that the trial judge issued inappropriate jury instructions or that evidence was erroneously admitted. It is not sufficient for a party to appeal simply because they did not like the trial court's decision, nor can the government appeal a not guilty verdict in a criminal proceeding. Nearly all appeals are reviewed by the Federal Court of Appeal System. Judges in these courts are bound by precedent or the decisions previously made by courts of appeals and the Supreme Court, but they have considerable discretion in implying these earlier decisions to new cases. A decision of that court can be appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, the federal system has 13 circuit courts of appeal. Eleven of these are determined by geography, or their jurisdiction is determined by geography. These courts of appeal hear appeals from the federal district courts that are located in each of the states that make up their circuit. In addition, the district court 
of Columbia Circuit handles appeals from the Federal District Court for the District of Columbia and a Federal Circuit Court hears specialized cases such as those involving patent law or those decided by the U.S. Court of International Trade. The District Court of Columbia Circuit hears the largest number of cases challenging federal laws, regulations, and administrative decisions. Circuit courts normally operate as a panel of three judges. Less than 1% of their decisions are appealed to the Supreme Court. Unless reviewed by that court, all the decisions from the appeals court are generally final. And this is a Figure 15.2 basically uh, showcases the uh, federal appellate court system and how the circuit courts are divided up uh, via geography. Now the level three, the Supreme Court. The Constitution established only one court of appeals for the entire nation. This is known as the Supreme Court or the court of last resort. The U.S. Supreme Court is the highest court in the nation. Once the Supreme Court makes a decision, the dispute or the case is over. Compared with Congress and the presidency, the Supreme Court has changed the least since its creation. There are nine seats on the Supreme Court today compared with six in 1789. The Constitution does not specify the number of justices on the court. Congress does have the authority to change the court's size. The court shared a space previously with the House and the Senate until it got its own building in 1935. Unlike the current practice in both the Houses of Congress, oral arguments before the court are not televised and the justices still appear in robes. Jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Original jurisdiction is the authority to consider a case initially. Appellate jurisdiction is the authority to hear appeals from a lower court's decision. Article 3 of the Constitution gives the Supreme Court original jurisdiction in a limited variety of cases, such as between the United States and one of the 50 other states, between two or more states, between foreign ambassadors or other ministers or cases that are brought by one state against citizens of another state or against a foreign nation. In all of the cases, the Supreme Court has appellate jurisdiction. In general, federal courts may decide only cases or controversies arising under the Constitution, a federal law, a treaty, or admiralty or marine time law, cases that are brought by a foreign nation against the state or the federal government, and diversity suits. These are lawsuits between citizens of different states if the amount of the controversy exceeds $75,000. Now, Table 15.1 is from your textbook. It uh, lists the Supreme Court justices. Uh, and basically, it's, it's a little outdated. It's uh, from 2020. Uh, and it lists uh, the justices in order of seniority. At the top, we have Clarence Thomas, who was nominated uh, by George H.W. Bush and was uh, confirmed in 1991. Below that, we have Stephen Breyer, who was a federal judge, and he was appointed by Clinton in 1994. John Roberts Jr. and Samuel Alito were both appointed and confirmed under George W. Bush. Uh, and then we have Obama, got Sonia Sotomayor and Alega Kagan, Kagan sorry, appointed in 2009 and 2010. And then we have President Trump, who got Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett confirmed and appointed between 2017 and 2020. Uh, President Joe Biden currently has only got one justice um, opening when Steve Breyer retired 
he was able to nominate and get confirmed Katani Brown Jackson in 2022. We are going to end lecture two there.